Welcome to Gas Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering practice problem 10.10. .10. So we are asked to find the Norton equivalent of this circuit, which comprises of the Norton equivalent current, as well as the Norton equivalent impedance. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And if you like this video, just go ahead and give it a thumbs up. So let's start by finding the Norton equivalent current. So let's look at this circuit. We can just assign names to each of the meshes, or this one's already labeled as IO, so you can take that to be IO going around that part, that loop of the mesh. But in between here, you'll notice that we have a current source in between two meshes or two loops, which will make all of this uh, one huge mesh or a super mesh. So let's form the relationship between the current source and the two mesh currents. Looking at this node up here, this one is going in, this one is going in, and that one is going out, which means the sum of these two is equal to that one. And therefore, IO is equal to 2, get an angle of that, plus I1. So that is the first equation which we have, and that is the first relationship which we have. We can just uh, swap everything around. So it looks familiar. Well, we have the variables on, on one side and constants on one side. We can just say negative. So taking this to so taking this to this side, right? I'm gonna say plus i one is equals two, and then taking this to that side. That. So this is our first equation. I'm going to move on to mesh 1 at the top. So let's go to mesh, uh, mesh I1 or mesh 1, whatever you want to call it. Going around that mesh, starting here, going there, and finally coming here, we're going to have 4 plus J2 multiplied by I1. Then we're going to have plus I, um, this is 1, actually, 1 subtract J3. I1, and then it's actually going to subtract 1 on its G3 with IO. Then we're going to finally have 8 I1 subtract 8 I2 into this to 0. Now, adding the like terms, we're going to have this added to that and that. So this is 4 plus 1, which is 5. Then we're gonna also have eight over there. So the sum of all of that should be 13. So 13, and we have J2, we have negative J3. Then we have, so two, that is minus one. Then coming to, to that is, so that is all in terms of I1. So we're gonna have negative J, I1. Then moving on to I2, we only have that in terms of i i2, so negative 8 i2. Let's put i o first, so we can find 0, 1, 2, because I'm going to use Kramer's rule. And if you aren't familiar with Kramer's rule, just go to my tutorial on Kramer's rule. I'll actually put the link to that in the description. So we're going to use Kramer's rule. So I just want to pack these into i o, i1, and i2, as you saw from here. So i o. I1 and I2 is 0 in this case, and then we have a constant on this side. So we have that equation, we have this equation which we're building right now. So the final thing which we should have is that, which is our IO, so negative 1 subtract that, right? We're going to have this IO added to that. And all of this is equal to 0. So this is our second equation. It doesn't really matter which uh, order of the equations you use. I'm just going to use the one which I have. I'm just labeling these, and then I'm going to put them into a matrix and then do uh, matrix operations according to Kramer's rule to actually find the values. But here's another equation. If you look at IO over here, we want to find IN, remember? And this is the load, so I can actually take that out. I'm going to replace that with a short circuit. And we're going to have a current IN going down, which is what we want to find. But if you look at IO, it's going that direction, which is the same direction as that, as that and on the same wire, which means IN is equal to IO. 
which means our task is to find IO. After finding IO, we know that we have found IN. So that is what we're basically doing now. Let's see what other equation we can have or what other equation we can actually formulate. So we haven't touched the super mesh or we haven't done anything with regards to the super mesh. So now let's tap into the super mesh now. Now that we're in the super mesh, we're going to go around this super mesh, which is this here. So checking that out, we're going to have negative 10 plus 8 i2 subtract i1. Then we're going to have plus 1 subtract j3. Then we're going to have io subtract. So this is going to be, at this point, subtract i1. Is equal to zero because there's nothing else in the super mesh. So you only have the voltage source. Then you have the eight, which is shared between these two meshes. And you have that, which is shared between these two meshes. And now we're going to add the like terms and form our equation. So basically, we're going to have one subtract J3 multiplied by I1. Then I1, let's look at I1. What do we have? We have negative eight. Then we also have negative one over there. So we're definitely, definitely going to have negative 9. Then what can what can we put as well with regards to I1? We also have that. So negative J3. So all of that is multiplied by I1. You can just factor the negative out and the result is going to be factoring the negative out. We're going to have that. Then over here we're going to have that. So these actually form a positive and that is why this was supposed to be positive, and therefore it's going to stay as a negative just there. So negative G3 multiplied by negative I1 is actually positive. Then when you multiply these two, it's going to be positive, so that is correct. So finally, we're going to take the constant to the other side of the equal sign, which is equal to 10. Now I have three equations, and we're going to pack these equations up into a matrix. So the matrix format doesn't really matter which one you start with. I'm just going to follow a random order or an order which I I actually used before. So starting with this one, then we're actually going to move on to this one. And finally, you're going to have that one. So starting with this one, putting it into your matrix, you're going to have, then you're going to have 13 minus J, then finally you're going to have minus eight. And this is for our first determinant going to have something like that. Then we are going to have the second one, which is over here. So negative 1, 1, and 0. So negative 1. Then for... So let's see, what do we have over here? Previously had that, and that this is actually I2 plus... So this is I2. You're supposed to be I2. So it's I2 plus the the current source is equal to IO. So IO is equal to the current source plus I2. This is supposed to be I2. So we have minus one. So we have minus one, zero, and one. Minus one, zero. And we also have one and one. Right? That is what we have for the first determinant. Then we're going to have one, which is the last equation, which is over here. 1 subtract j3, then we have negative 9 subtract j3, then we have 0 over there because we don't have anything for i2, right? So this is our first determinant which you're going to compute, and the answer to that should be 42 plus j6. Moving on to the first determinant, which let's, let's just denote as sub 0 to actually be in line with this IO, which you're actually going to find. So the first determinant after the base determinant over here is going to give you your, your determinant, which you're going to use to find IO, because IO is equal to this determinant, which is our first determinant after the base divided by the base determinant, right? So you're going to find this determinant by shifting the constant matrix or the constant side. And what you're basically going to do Again, just visit Kramer's rule if you don't know what I'm talking about. So after doing this determinant, which is the first determinant, you are going to find a delta 
O of 162 subtract J74. And then coming back to this, saying this divided by the determinant which you found down here. Then your IO is therefore going to be, which is also the same as your IN. The value of that, or the answer is 4.198 with an angle of negative 32.68 degrees, and that is in amperes. So now found the Norton equivalent current, we're going to move on to find the Norton equivalent resistance or impedance. So let's do that quickly. So to find the Norton equivalent impedance, we take out the, all the independent sources. We had an independent source over here, so we're also going to take this one out. It's going to become a short circuit. So our resulting circuit, let me just clear it up and make sure it's neat so you understand. So we're going to combine these two. It's going to be 4 plus that. And down here, we're going to have 8. I'm going to combine these two as well. You can basically just combine everything because all of this is just in series now. Because there's no, there's nothing there. So all of these are just in series. So you can combine 8, 1, and minus J3 to be that. This is basically the new circuit that we have, and we asked to find the Norton equivalent impedance with respect to AB. So your answer is basically, uh, sorry, basically just the parallel combination of these two. So ZN is equal to 4 plus J2 parallel 9 subtract that. So computing this, which is basically just uh, this multiplied by that divided by this plus that. So the answer. Or the answer which you should expect after computing this, which you have previously done in the previous chapters, is basically um, 3.1, so it's 3.176 plus J 0 0.706 in ohms. So for this same problem, we are asked to find IO, which is indicated over here, using the equivalent circuit. So our Norton equivalent looks something like that. We have values for both of those, and we have our IO indicated going out into the terminals where we have our load. And you can just combine the load to be 10 subtract J5 which is what we had at the load. So you also find this IO, and you can basically just find it using current division. And your answer should be 985.7 with an angle of negative 2.101, and this is in milliampere.